I'm at the Watchman's. Oh, sorry, yeah. I can look in the mirror like this. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, with a two de two seconds of running. Yeah, that, that would be weird. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Andrew. We're trying. What what uh, what was it? Is it too complicated for me to? Uh, not too this is to this is broken. What is that? This, this is, is the thing that connects. Box. This is the thing that connects the camera to the computer, and it works. And now it doesn't. Yeah. But we but we are we are live. But we are live. We're live. And. What is that thing called, though? Does it have a name? This is an Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. Oh, it's the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. Oh, if you had said that. You would have. Ultra Studio Mini Recorder is probably about like the piano. I mean, I, I usually carry one in my bag. But um, you. <laughs> there's so much going on. So, um, you guys, do you have questions about your work for creative process? I'm totally spaced on what we're doing right now. I'm just like packing up like I'm going for <laughs> This is my favorite part. So, uh, this is my favorite part. So thanks, Matt and Andrew. They got it working. And literally, I wanted to watch myself. I couldn't. <laughs> Anybody have any questions about your work, your creative process, that we will answer? Nope. Yes. Okay. Everybody's like, no. Everybody's like, no. I ain't asking nothing. I was like, I know everything. Tell me something. So how's it going? Yeah. Yeah, I know, I understand. Yeah, there was a, a candidate in town the other day giving out free ice cream. I'm gonna say who just saying. You missed it. You missed it. I saw I saw people were lined up with expectant looks. <laughs> That's one way to get, I know, right? I, I used to give out free ice cream. It's true. What are some good ground rules to lay out and starting to work on any part of it? Ah, like, uh, what's your name? Tim. Tim. So you're on a first name basis with this person? Tim? Yes. Yes. So, uh, um, a person like, uh, are they, like, say you're writing a musical and they're doing. Book is a little lyric, and the lyrics too. Well, a lot of Most of them, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and you, so you haven't worked with this person before? Not as a partner. I've been with them in a PR, so I do their shows. Okay, so you know, so you know them. Yes. You know them. So are there? Well, you know, so you know already how to be kind and considerate and. You know, like talk to them, and yeah. um, I would say what's important to me is that I sort of tell people what I need, sort of every step of the way. I'm like um, dating. It's like dating. It is dating, basically, right? Except you're not going to do that. But um, but it is like cool. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Um, so maybe that'll happen. But um. It's, but it is like it's like dating, right? Uh, you, you you're upfront with what you need. You're upfront with what you can do. You know, you're open about sort of what you're nervous about, and you don't sort of fall super pseudo. You know, and think like, oh, they can read my mind. You know what I mean? And you don't also you don't want to sell yourself short. You know, so you're writing a book in the lyric. That's your tear up. Oh, you're writing the book. That's your territory, right? You're the, you're the word guy, we'll say, right? And they're going to be the music person. And it's just be honest every step of the way so that you don't get three months into it and, whoop, you know, you can, you can do that, right? And even those difficult conversations that like, you don't really want to have because it might not hurt their feelings and then they might not like you, happen in a kind and considerate way. Find a way, do you know this person? Find a way to have those difficult conversations up front. And we know the same because it's like dating, right? You know that if you have those difficult conversations early on, it's better. It's just better, right? And you can look back over your shoulders and go, ah, oh, remember when we, we had that hard conversation? And then as it goes on, because you'll be successful in this partnership, 
it will go on and it's only going to get more difficult because you know the air is rarer and rarer as you go forward and you'll be glad that you had those hard conversations at the beginning because then you start dealing with producers and money and this and that and actors and casting and costumes and what's the week going to wear and all that kind of stuff you will have these hard conversations you'll have a bank account of you know, professional intimacy you know so just have all those hard conversations as they come up right sure thank you that's a good guess you know that Yes, Adam. Um, when one, I, I, I'm going to say one because I know that you don't like it when I say two. Uh, <laughs> when one is like in the middle of war and kind of like, not even in the middle, like it still has a long way to go and long story, what are some good things for one to tell oneself as they kind of like are moving forward? Like, you will get to the end. Yes. Like, you will get to the end. That's a good one. I think we can come up with like 10. Great things, at least. Like, you will get to the end. That's a good one. Anybody else have something that they can't see you know? Tomorrow, what's your name? Nancy, tomorrow's another day. That's a good one. What do you think, Tim? What's something you might say to yourself? There's always an answer. That's great. There's always an answer. There's always an answer, right? What do you think, Carol? What's a good thing that you say? This always happens. <laughs> In every, that's a great thing. This always happens. Right? But she usually chat right. This always happens. So it's some despair. I've been through this before. This always happens. And I always find a way, right? Something. Thank you. 
So, uh, yeah, a lot of times I see Reddit up on the first piece. So, can you remember why I see Reddit up on the first piece of the new one? Well, mainly for Ryan, you know, how he, he has the problem with having the beginning, middle, and end sort of thing. And he's got, like, the certain moments. So, when when writing, you know, because I have certain moments of things that, I, that I'm working on. Okay. But writing writing it out on the note cards just ends up getting me even more confused. Right. So I don't really, for some reason, having it all written out in one place just kind of confuses me with handwriting it out. So oh. what would you do then? Okay, so hold on. Writing it out, handwriting it out uh, is confusing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Having it on the five note cards and trying to fit it all onto the note cards, oh. I end up wanting to write way more than the note cards, and oh. then when I write it out on the paper, it gets even more confusing. I'm oh. the worst at writing. Cards. So who's five note cards? Did I say five note cards? I think you said for one situation it was three note cards to have your beginning, middle, and end, sure. and for one it was to have no more than five. Yeah, that was three note cards for um, Alexis. Yeah. And five maybe for Ryan. For Ryan. Yeah. And so for you it might be 50, I don't know. Mm -hmm. so, so that's one thing. One, you know, we, we're, we're not talking about specific number of note cards. Mm -hmm. That's number, that's something. Um, the thing with note cards is that they help you, um, one, put it on a bite-sized, note cards are small, because they're bite-sized. You can do it on posters. You, you can do it on paper, sure, like that. Because I wanted her, you know, it's interesting. I wanted Alexis to think about her beginning, her middle, her end. That was just that. If I wanted her to think about the whole story, then I could put how many note cards do you want? You know, that kind of thing. But I wanted her to just focus on beginning and writing. Okay. And then, and then what did I say after that? One, two, three, and then fill them in. What happens between the beginning and the middle? What happens between the those two points. Yeah. 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 So she could end up with 50. I don't know. Yeah. She, I mean, I don't know. I mean, she's not here today. Okay. Maybe she's on Twitter. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Okay. Okay. So yeah, it's not about three cards. It's about the cards and keeping it flexible and writing stuff down by hand and kind of getting out off your computer and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. something very interesting because I'm finding myself pulling scenes from things that had just been sitting and now they're all I'm oh, getting cool. a puzzle it's becoming a puzzle uh -huh. that I'm trying okay, to put cool. together that's really cool for so that's what it is and right. it's called 95 miles north because cool. his whole point he had a summer house up in 
Long Island, and he said, you know, it's about 95 miles from here, and you can't tell anything happened. I'm like, oh, wow. yeah, well, from my house, <laughs> right, right, it's right, a right. somewhat different views. Oh, wow. Wow. So that's what it turned into. So that's now, cool. so now you have Act One, which is actually a whole play. On the yeah, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, and then you have this other thing called 95 Mile North, which is his play. Yeah, it's the one act. Uh -huh. His name is Ralph. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so that's kind of. That's really cool. I don't. I was like, kind of going, is that how? I mean, I'm sitting with the question going, well, that sounds how it was supposed to be. And I guess the answer is that's how it's turned out. So now I'm sitting with post it notes tonight. Cool. And I, yeah, so I'll, I'll keep posting. That's really cool. So that's, yeah. that's what happened there. <laughs> that's, that's really great. How does it feel? It's, it's interesting. It's weird. It's just, I was, you know, I'm newly coming back after uh -huh. 25 years of not wanting to write. Uh -huh. So, and this was the genre I was studying when I left. Oh. So it's wow. kind of interesting to have come back to it. And one of it is, the no I wrote a novel uh -huh. that someone has been reading, uh -huh. and they've come back to me and said, yeah, you, it still reads like a play. Nice try. <laughs> so, uh, you can't escape. So I'm, right. yeah, I can't escape. So that's kind of where I'm at with this, so. That's really cool. I guess I should just keep writing, because I don't really <laughs> know what else to ask at this point. It's, but it, it seems, what it sounds like is it sounds like you listened, you heard, and you're following it. Yeah. You know, and you're continuing to move forward based on what you're hearing, which is really good. Yeah, it's, you know? it's still a very strange experience that he's gone. Oh, well, that, but that's, a, yeah, that's another issue. Really yeah. love to talk to well, him. Well, sure, sure. But I, I have his dad, who is not really in the mood to talk to anybody at the moment, but uh -huh. hopefully he'll come around. Uh-huh. So, that's we'll really cool. I'm glad he's in your play. Yeah. He, He's a very vibrant spirit. Uh -huh. so. Well, apparently he's still <laughs> he is a very vibrant he spirit. He is a very vibrant spirit. <laughs> yeah. So. That's really cool. Yeah. Oh, good job. So keep us posted. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. You have a game plan? Like you're just going to keep on writing or what? Well, he coached a softball team, and I play on a softball team, and we're heading into season, and we share a home field with uh, the Broadway League team so I think something is going to happen there with it it'll give it I feel like it'll give it a structure to have the piece be beginning of the season to the end of the season so we're going all over the place I'm like in Central Park now I think I'm just trying to find where it's supposed to happen and uh -huh. what's supposed to happen and I have the who of who, <laughs> who's who's in charge so we'll see so yes yeah, so I'll keep you posted <laughs> writing, does one find oneself writing something and it kind of goes in a place because what I found is that I start writing and I'm thinking, I'm going to be writing blah 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 and it's turned into not yeah, sometimes, what I thought. Sometimes it goes like that. What about you, Ricardo? You just like put your foot down and say, I know what I'm writing, here I go, and then it kind of becomes something else? Oh, yeah, frequently. Uh -huh. um, okay. I was actually just going to ask about expectations and like and like balancing expectations, yeah. particularly around working. Uh -huh. um, uh, and <clears throat> more around, you know, I don't think it's, I think it's great to not have expectations. I love mm -hmm. that as a mantra and ideal. Mm -hmm. However, I frequently have expectations. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. this human thing. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to balance how I, I want something, you know, when I am writing, I do want something to turn out a certain way and I have a standard I want to meet. Right. And, if it doesn't meet that standard, I get very vexed with it. Right. And similarly, in career-wise, outside right. of the writing, right. I have these expectations of what I would like from this collaborator, sure. or what sure. I would like from sure. my career right now. Sure. Sure. And I think it can be healthy to have some of those, but right. sometimes they just really get in the way in terms of what if what I'm writing doesn't want to be what I expect it to be, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Or what yes. if 
who I'm collaborating with doesn't want to be that right, person, right, either, right, right. which I know is inevitable. Yeah, and it's tricky, like, no expectations. I mean, and you hear that a lot. I mean, date people. No expectations. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, what does that mean? I mean, you want something. You admit you want something. I mean, don't be a human. Be, be a robot. Don't expect anything. I mean, people are like, what does that mean? I expect things but, um, all the time. I have expectations. Great expectations. I have great expectations. And yet I also sort of, it's okay if, they don't turn out the way I want. Both, can we have both? Can you have both? So I'm not saying don't have any expectations. You say, have all your expectations, have them all. Have them all, I mean, I, this is what I do. Have them all, have every single one of them. And can you find a way to be okay if it doesn't turn out like you want? Yeah, because then you get excited about the road. And that's the thing, that you all, if you're also this thing about the journey, is the journey, the journey, oh, shut up. Okay, I wanna get to Oz, even Dorothy, you know what I'm saying? Right? Um, but you enjoy, but that's how you enjoy the road. You get, you get excited about where you wanna go. And also, you're okay somehow with it not turning out that way, and then you actually enjoy the work. So, you're writing a play or a screenplay or a movie or, TV show or whatever, or working with a wonderful collaborator, and it doesn't work out like you hoped, but you think, but I did it. I did it. I went out there. I tried. So you get excited about those kinds of things, and you get proud of yourself because you tried, and you gave it everything you had. It's like romance. You know, date, again, I, everything, Tim, sorry, it's about dating. It's all about dating. Because you, you go to the mat and you didn't give it every single thing you got. So it doesn't work out. But you didn't hold back and go, mm, I'm only going to give more 50% on this one. Because you know it might not work out. No, no, no. Give 100%. And then what happens is you start to grow and get more resilient and stronger and more joyful. You know? Which doesn't mean that you can't be bummed. You know, come on. You know, the newspaper doesn't like my new, you know, TV show or album or whatever, painting or play or whatever. The collaborator, you know, whatever, blah, 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 whatever. It happens. You become joyful because what you really are interested in is the, the work. And what's the most, for me, the most exciting thing about the creative process is the creative process. That moment when there you are. Right. Or talking with your artistic collaborators and you're trading ideas and excited or you're in rehearsal making it happen. That's the most exciting part. So can we do that though? So you have all your brilliant expectations. Reach really high. Hey, oh look, it's just <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Reach really, really high. And if you and if you don't touch the ceiling every day, that's okay. You're still gonna be a better person for having done this, right? Yes, good, good questions. Thank you. Anybody else? Go make the dance. <laughs> oh, yes, Angie. Angie, the okay. sound woman. Yes. My question is kind of silly, so I don't write. I'm terrified of it. Yes. Um, and I always have been. Yes. Um, and I want to start writing. Yes. But I want to do it, I know that it's like for the sake of writing something or having written something. Okay. And so I don't know what to write about. Because I feel like I want to do it for the action of it, not because I have a specific story in mind. Right. So do you have advice on like where someone would start if they know sure. they just want to do it, but they don't no, have, or I don't have like, right. Right something that's gnawing at you. Right, right. Uh, two things. Um, one, I would, hopefully this will terrify you, I would suggest that perhaps you do have something gnawing at you, you just can't really feel it yet. Okay. Which is cool. So you're not just like, writing because, like, what the fuck, you got some free time, you want me to write. You know what I'm saying? You're not, there's, so, there's something there. You're just kind of beginning to sense it, sort of. Which is great, which is cool. It's cool. 
You don't have to like tell the world. You don't have to get here. We won't make you stand there and tell everybody. You know what I mean? Okay, so that's cool. So you can feel like there's something there and you're starting to listen to it. And it's starting to pull your attention, which is why you're asking this question right now. Okay, so the second thing is we get you a, a writing time of day, right? So what's your favorite time of day? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. But I can't. <laughs> you can't what? I work. Okay, well what about 9? You right. like morning? You're a morning person? Eh? Ish? Eh? Yep. Eight? When do you leave the house? 6. Or 6. 6.30. 6 so 10 a.m. is like, you're like, that's a weird, that's a weird favorite time of day. 10 a.m. You're like, you're like kind of a, you too? You're also, oh, both of you. I, write, I do my best work from 10 to 2. 10 to 2. Okay. So, 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 so ten. lunch. Lunch. Well, oh, okay. So, it's right. So, you can spill into some lunch. You take lunch at 12 noon or something like that. So, can you find a quiet-ish place? Or at least put on your, your phone, you know, the thing, write the headphones on your phone to make it look like you're in an important meeting and actually just listen to your head. And you can find, so how about try the, the timer and get yourself as a present, a timer that's simple, not your phone. Get yourself something like this, simple. All it does is count the time. And you sit there on your lunch break. You have a lunch break where you can go and sit somewhere. And you. Put on that face that says, like, I'm doing something, so don't talk to me. So your co-workers won't go, Angie, like that. They won't talk to you. And you take out your notebook or your laptop or whatever, and can you write for 20 minutes? Just about whatever you want. Just blah, blah, blah. Yeah? You have, so you have, like, a, a computer that you bring to work every day or, meh, or a, a notebook. A notebook? You like that? You like that notebook? Great. So you have a notebook, and you're writing longhand blah, 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 whatever, 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 20 minutes. Or if that's like too long and you're stretching it, try 15 minutes, okay? 15 minutes every lunch break, and then you can close your notebook and go ahead and have your lunch and enjoy yourself in other ways. Does that make sense? So you would just do that. What's great is that you're, you've decided that you want to do this. You can get yourself a new notebook if you want. If you want, you see. You can get yourself a timer, you can get presents. You get gifts. You get to give yourself presents. And um, and you write, sort of make it a daily practice. And then on the days you don't go to work, you work every day or, okay. On the days you don't go to work, you try to keep the same time. Around lunchtime, around 10 a.m., you sit down for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And just do that and see what comes up. See, because like the ocean, you're like an ocean. And you're like, I don't know. There's nothing there, but I kind of want to be here. There's something there. And it will slowly come up to the surface where you can see it and hear it. It's cool. Yeah, and, and just enjoy showing up every day for yourself like that. Okay? Cool. Thanks for asking. Good question. That's a good question. One more question. One more question.
So Nancy's saying, so you, you are starting your writing practice, and some of the voices in her head are very positive, because you're doing it, which is good. But I didn't do it since I came back. Uh -huh. I wrote while I was there, and then I stopped, and this is the first time. But this is good. This is good. And some of the, so you can do what Angie's doing, and, and find that time of day that you like a lot, and spend 20 minutes or, or 15 minutes, get yourself a timer, you got yourself a notebook, right? And so you have a lot of other voices in your head, which is, I'm not sure why your teacher said say positive things, but one of the reasons why sometimes we say positive things to each other is to fill your head with positive things. Because you all got enough negative things in your head, right? Every, we all do. Right? So what we want to try to train ourselves to do is have a few positive things in there to sort of counter all that negative crap oh, well, we've got swimming around in our head, right? Which doesn't mean that we won't be able to then be effective critics or editors of our work. That doesn't mean that. It means that when the time comes for that sort of discrimination to come out, we're going to be able to work it very well. So I would just say, what's your favorite positive thing that you can think about yourself as a writer? That I'm able to sort of like link it all together after I put my, all my thoughts. I, I, I am be able, I'm able to have a beginning and an end. The middle is always a little weird. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm able to have a beginning and an end. I'm able to write something. That's your favorite thing. So when you feel those, hear those negative things, you can say, I am able to write something. So when you ask, would she write this? Would, would Samantha write this? It's not about Samantha. Yo, it's about Nancy. I'm able to write something. You know, so you can keep coming back to that, for example. And Annika's waving at us, which means it. No, you're not, you're just scratching your head. Okay. But see, this, Maybe we can keep talking. How round will go on its way? We can talk for a few more minutes. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Okay. okay. Does that make? Oh, good. But I'm just going to say so. She says something because next week NYU will be here or something. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Yes. You want to tell them about NYU? Sure. Because okay. we're running out of time. So Hi everybody, um, so we're going to be back here next week, uh, same place, same time, and we're going to be joined by the NYU writing class, right? Which one? There are like a hundred of them. I actually... Maybe all of them. Maybe, oh, maybe yeah. all of them. Yeah. They will all be Thousands. here. Millions so if you yeah. visit us, if you come and you visit us here in okay, person, great. get here a little early. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. We'll keep talking a little bit, Nancy. Okay. Thank you. I'm just flattering myself, blah, 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 you know. Just focus on that positive thing um, that moves you in the direction of where you want to go. That yeah. Great kids you have to send you to a writer. That's his chair. He invited me here and then had another kid. Oh, it's okay. It's still, it's still it's great that he's yeah. really loving, really loving other kids to do that for you. All right. And you'll see what happens. You keep showing up for it. Keep showing up for yourself, and stuff will happen. It, it does, because that's the way. That's the way it is. And it works. Yeah. So everybody cool? Anybody have any? No. Well, all right. Can go. <laughs> I can go. All right. Thanks a lot, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.